We're on site today with Ross from RS Electrics to install a new EV charger from Sync EV. But Ross has already cursed this project because he said it was going to be easy. And we all know once you've said that, things can go horribly wrong. Pretty sure the charger is going to be easy to install, but as we know, electrical installations are a game of two halves. There's what we've got to do to the fixed installation and the cabling route to get the charger where it needs to be. So here's the charger we're going to be fitting from BG Sync EV. Now part of the Laseco group, and we can already see on the back there's some design features we've seen in other BG products in the past, so we'll be looking at them a little bit closer. To make our life even easier as well, we've got the uh, popular EV Ultra cable from Doncaster Cables, so we can hook up our internet if we're not using Wi-Fi or possibly even a current transformer as well and we've also got this new distribution board uh, from BG although this is an exterior version and coloured to match the charger we're actually going to be putting it inside but we thought we might as well use the opportunity to take a look at this new product as well so I can see we're off to a good start the cable's already hanging out the wall but there's no sign of Ross so let's go and see where he is still no sign of Ross ah what are you doing down there Ross <laughs> Escaping. You don't just get us SDS drilled. I've just walked into the project and got a job. 5.5 you say Ross. I think I'm beginning to see why Ross said this job was easy. I'm going to take my coat off and I'm going in to find out where he is. That's probably got to be the most generous crawl space I've ever seen. So before I vanish into the abyss, we've got the service head here that's feeding the property. Uh, we can see it's on a TNS supply. So are we worried about pen fault? Not for this, however, we we're always told to assume that at some point in the future this could be converted so we'll fit penfold protection and luckily that's built into the BG Sync EV charger. This is an old service head so it may be uh, that once the uh, notification's gone in the DNO may choose to replace it. Um, it's only rated at 60 amps uh, but we're going to get around that today by using the current transformer option that you can fit to uh, limit the load depending on what else is in the property. A quick flick under the consumer unit here. We don't have any other major current appliances. We've got sockets, we've got a cooker as we'd expect so there's no electric shower so that really shouldn't be an issue. Right here we go, I'll see you soon. Never mind crawl space, you could almost fit another room under here so I can hear some racket going on in here. Oh, I found Rick as well. So uh, you said this was going to be an easy job, Ross. Yes. Uh... I, can, I think we can see why now. Yeah. <laughs> You've already got the cable in. You Cable's your... in early in. We're just uh, adding a few clips here. Isn't it? Yeah, well, it seems like the uh, previous people who've worked in here didn't bother with clips actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, plumbers using data cable to support uh, support the heating pipes. There's a novel approach. So we can see the cable feed and the property coming along the wall here. It looks like an old uh, paper and uh, paper insulated with uh, plenty of tar on top, but also down here, this isn't a cable, looks like one. We've got an old lead water pipe, which uh, I'm surprised. I'm, I'm assuming it's still being used because if it wasn't, there's actually quite a bit of a scrap value in the length of that pipe. Ross finalises a mounting location for the charger in a convenient location near to the parking space. Then selects a cable route, avoids that air brick and drills through the wall and carefully routes the cable back to the electricity meter location. We've used EV Ultra Cable because it combines both power and data into one cable for a neater installation and we've fixed that using the D-line clips for a tidy installation. Doncaster's finest. The Sync EV charger can connect to the internet via Wi-Fi or a hardwired Ethernet connection or an optional 4G SIM card version is available. We've tested the Wi-Fi in this area of the house where the charger is so we're confident we're going to get a signal so we're just going to use the data cable to connect the current transformer to the meter tails back to the charger. At the meter position we're fitting a dedicated consumer unit just to feed the EV charger. It's a new range from BG, which includes surge protection that is recommended if the installation doesn't have it already. And obviously if you have sensitive electronics in the installation, adds an additional layer of protection for nearby lightning strikes. So Ross drills out the gland positions for the incoming tails and the cable out to the charger and the wire down to the current transformer and then puts them into some Henley blocks where he split the existing tails going into the consumer unit. In this case, of wiring it up, uh, Ross has found a little widget to attach uh, the wires for the current transformer. One of them doodars. They always come in handy, you see these. And then it's case talking the uh, connections to the right settings. A little bit of testing and then we're ready 
for the final install of the charger. So we haven't cursed this job yet. Ross has finished the mains install at the distribution board end and we're ready to fit the charger outside. The homeowner has turned up with a car with an empty battery, so the pressure's on. It looks like it's gonna rain. The wind's building up. So we're going to crack on. Before we do that, BG Sync EV make two versions of this charger. There's the tethered version that we're fitting here for convenience, or you can get this untethered or socketed version. We've made a separate video on our eFix Energy channel that explains some of the decisions that you may go through to decide which one you want. So check out that video. I'll leave a link in the description. So here's some of the accessories supplied with the charger that we're going to use during this installation. First up, get the fixing template out so we can drill our mounting positions. And what we like about this charger is you can separate the electronics and keep that to one side while you're doing the rest of the installation. Some features he inherited from BG, uh, these little silicon reservoirs, Ooh. again all part of the process to help us maintain a high IP rating on the enclosure. So we put that in there before mounting to the wall. There's a handy little spirit level in there as well just to get the charger nice and level. Uh, finish tightening those screws off and then put some little screw caps on, again just to help maintain that IP rating and then uh, prepare our cable. A few additional clips up the wall. Again, we're using the D-line clips here, so it's almost invisible. Trim the cable to length, a little bit of scrap there. Right, scrap pile. Don't tell Gordon. Save it for later. Don't tell Gordon. <laughs> and then use the cable gland that's supplied with the charger for non-armoured cables. Uh, trim our uh, cable to length and bring out the course. Bring the cable in. There is a little cable clamp there as well that goes onto the incoming cable. Uh, again, just to keep everything uh, in the right place as we do the final termination. So into the mating part of the plug and socket. So we, uh, they're just uh, little push-in uh, Vargo style connectors here. And then some final preparations on the data side of the cable. Uh, we're going to leave the remaining cores in there. We only need two for the current uh, transformer. But should we have a problem with the Wi-Fi, we need to introduce a hardwired connection there available. Make the connector back together. So plugging in the, the outgoing lead uh, as well as the incoming lead because uh, this is uh, a tethered charger and then just those final connections uh, for the current transformer again this little push connectors on there as well so you don't need a, a screwdriver for this stage so carefully put the unit back into place and then fix the uh, mounting screws back to the main body there is a torque setting for these so we'll just get the torque screwdriver out uh, to do that uh, it is recommended that you don't put the final cover on until uh, until you've actually commissioned the unit uh, but obviously we're, we're super confident that everything's going to work um, so we've clipped it in place and then one final tip a little bit of silicon into our mounting hole and just to disguise it a little bit of brick dust textbook oh yeah cleaning so the charger's now fully installed on the wall and we're ready to test and power up and i think you'll agree it's a pretty smart looking charger Blends in well with house, neat cable storage on there as well. Now, we said it was a game of two halves, it's actually three because it's now found for that third act. How easy is it to commission and set up so we can get it finally working? This charger is really simple to commission with the dedicated installer app, meaning you don't need the customer's smartphone to finish the installation. Just all you will need is their Wi-Fi credentials to put in to hook the charger to the Wi-Fi network. And then in this case, we wanted to commission our dynamic charging with the current transformer. So we have a 60 amp supply coming into the property and we're on a 32 amp circuit. We can limit that. And then it's ready for handover to the customer. You just need to uh, input there. Uh, email address and you can put in the postcode and the MPAN number if you have it for the electricity meter and then we're ready to go. If you're new to EV charger installation, check out the CPD here.